going to play, and I'm going to ask you to deal yourself. You've got, actually, you've got a sheet there for each hand. Starts with the number up in the right corner, 7-12. If you're on the odd side of the board, I think they've got numbers on the board, but if they don't, uh, if you're on this side of the table, this side of the table, you're going to be the dealer of the first hand. You already cut and decided that the folks here are dealers of the first hand. And don't give yourself flushes, but the dealer's hand is going to be a three, four, five, six, seven with a jack, and the other person's hand is going to be two queens and a king five on this side of the board, king five. You got all that? And we got three through seven side of the board. Now your paper shows that the dealer is discarding a three jack. That happens to be correct. <laughs> so if you were thinking about putting a seven jack, that's not a good idea. So the dealer is going to discard a three jack. We're not going to get to the crib. Well, we're going to get there in a sense. But uh, the other person doesn't need six cards. They just need two queens and a king five. And you're starting the game. Remember, the dealer is going to slow the game down, play defense. Folks on this side of the table are going to be playing defense. Defense on this side are going to be playing offense. You're going for points, going for maximum score, and, and so on. So, as you notice, which queen would you lead? Did anybody hold a hand where the queen matches their king in suit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, if you did, then you ought to try to flake, fake the flush. If you do have a queen and a king in the same suit, lead the queen that matches the suit of the king. If you don't have that, then either queen is the proper lead. So go ahead and make your lead. Now, the dealer has a choice of putting a five or a six. He's playing defense. What's he going to do? Now, what do you have? You got a five and a six. Dealer's got a five and a six. So dealer plays a six on the ten lead. Nobody dropped a five on the six, did they? No. <laughs> they advanced the count to 26. So the dealer gets two pegs. Then whose lead is it now? Non-dealer. How many pegs has the non-dealer got so far? None. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I mean, you're supposed to get them, but the non-dealer is supposed to prevent you from getting them. The dealer... Why didn't you play the five? You play the five to 31. If you play the five, you're going to have to So you went six, 26, 31, and that means... And the dealer gets the last goal, right? Yeah. Doesn't it work out? The dealer gets the last yeah. goal. So you got three pegs and gave up none. That's how the dealer plays this game on the first hand of the game. You see, if you did it the other way, and you decide, well, hell, I might as well take the 15 with a five, then you give up two. This way you've got three, zero. The other way you get three and two. Much better, much better to score three pegs and give up zero. And if, and of course that would happen in this game repeatedly when you are playing, unless unless somehow you really get a terrific lead and you're going for a skunk or something. But if it was a typical game, you would play defensive, and your opponent would play offensive. So now we're ready to go into hand two. What does it look like at the end of hand one? Have you decided where the pegs go at the end of hand one? 
So the, so the non-dealer, this side of the table, scored eight. Did he get any? So they're, they're, they've got eight points, two queens and a king five. So put your, what did you do, take 10 already? No, I took nine. 16? <laughs> I, I was thinking that was I, I, I wanted to tell you that there are folks that will take 16 for an eight hand on the first hand of the game. But I didn't think I'd have one in the class. Yeah, I just have this. Oh. Anyway, if you're on this side of the board, you should have eight. Oh. How about the dealer? How many would he, did he have? Whoa. He got three. How did the cut do for his hand? He got two and ten is twelve. The cut, the cut was a seven. So the dealer got a 12-point hand, 15-2, and 10 is 12. Three peg. Do we know what the dealer got in the crib? No, because he never. Crib contains six points, right? Yeah, it never so the So the dealer should be a 12 hand, three pegs, and a six crib. <laughs> 21. 21 to 8. Okay, now we're ready to start deal two. I wanted to do an extra and of course, of course, the deal's going to be on this side of the board now. <laughs> now the deal's going to be on this side. And on Karen's and Carol's side of the table, you're going to give yourself a one, one, six, seven, eight, eight. Nice hand, huh? One, one, six, seven, eight, eight. Now, whose crib is it this time? Seven. Yeah. Where, where, where? Have you noticed what the other hand is? A king with two deuces and a three. King with two deuces and a three. Okay, two deuces and a three king. What I what I card for her crib? You don't you don't have six cards. You just I mean you did have, but. Whatever they are, they're gone. We're, we're going to tell how much the crib was, but uh, how many you put in my crib? I start. Dave. Oh, you're, you're okay. No, I no, you're right. I'm the dealer, so he loses. No, but you got it back. Okay. No, you're correct. You're holding. So he loses. You're the. You're the pawn. No, I'm the dealer. Hey, this. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll have to write Delin a letter on this. On this. Uh, this uh, this isn't working out right. Your your point is well taken. Uh, should be this side of the, and the lead should be here. Yeah. But that's not what this shows. This shows the eight as the lead with the king being played for eight. I'm winning like by a lot now. 
Anyway, let's let's skip this one because it does not make sense. You, you should not have the lead on the same side of the table, two hands in a row. Then your head, though. But let's put the pegs up where it shows they are at the end of this hand. You notice the cut was a six, so you, so you the person that held the eight eight seven six got a twenty point hand. So so the score now is forty two to seventeen. Forty seventeen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the score is 42 to 17. Now, okay. now this next one looks like it's it's correct. It's this deal three now, and on uh, on this side of the board, on this side of the board, we want to have a two, four, six, eight, ten king. You've seen that hand be before. Well, no, no, no. See, it, it was right here. You look if, at you, the writing. And I have a king just to straight. On this hand of the game, this side of the table has got a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 king. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 king. And the other side of the table has a 9, 10, jack, jack. Nine ten jack jack on Carol's side of the table, Karen's side of the table. Two four six eight ten king on this side of the table. Nine ten jack jack. Uh, this is an excellent this is an excellent hand to demonstrate a point. The two four six eight ten king on the dealer side of the board. The other side of the board has a nine ten with two jacks. Nine ten with two jacks. The dealer's got a two four six eight ten king. He puts the ten king in his crib. Lousy discard. Why does he put the ten king in his crib? Keep smaller cards for pegging. The other cards have pegging value. He has no score. It's important if you have a hand with no score to keep the cards that represent the best pegging value. Remember we talked about what the pegging values are. One through five have high pegging value. Six through nine have moderate pegging value. Jack has low pegging value. Ten queen king have none. So if the dealer had two cards for a ten queen king denomination, they should be on the table. So and they I are. Start. And then notice how it goes. From the nine ten jack jack, you decide to lead the nine on this side of the table, because the jack will usually draw five response and you can't do a damn thing about it. So you lead the nine, the dealer takes fifteen with the six. And then you make the count twenty-five with your ten keeping your jacks together, and the dealer goes 29 with a 4, and scores 31 for 2. Then you play the jack, and he splits the jacks with his 8th spot, and you get one peg. So now this is really a lopsided game the way it's going, huh? Yeah. So, so you got one, one player at 52, and the other one at 27. 52 and 27.
I think this one's going to work all right. So it's it's a, your opponent's crib here. You just had the crib. And this side of the table, Karen's side of the table, Carol's side of the table, you're going to have a 2, 3, 4, 7, 9 with a queen. Now the other side of the table is going to have a four with two sixes and a five. Well, the first hand I said was for Carol's side of the table and Karen's side. So I don't think all the boards are numbered. It seems like I see some without numbers on them. So, so if you're on this, if you're on this side, you'll have a two, three, four, seven, nine. Queen. If you're on this side, you have a four with two sixes and a five. Deal four. That's right. A four, two sixes, and a five. Two, three, four, seven, nine, queen. Two, three, four, seven, nine, queen. Four, five, six, six. Four, five, six, six. And then you notice what the cut is? Uh, so this this game's going to make a big flip flop right here, right? Uh, no, we're all back. No, we're back. So you're going to lead the three. You're throwing away the seven queen because the nine nine queen is better, but the seven queen gives you a chance for the nine to score with your two, three, four. How'd the pegging go? Pretty bad. So you each got one peg, right? You each, even though those those cards all look like they're pretty good pegging cards, only one peg on each side of the board. You each got one peg, or did you get two and? No, there's three pegs, I guess, all together. Yeah. A go. 29 got a, a peg, and you played the last card to score one. So what does the score look like? 24 hand, huh? Yeah. That happens in quite a few games. So the score suddenly is 58 to 61. <laughs> now what does it tell you? Your opponent just took the lead, right? With that big 24 hand. And you're at 58. So what does that tell you about this time? 58 to 61. What kind of strategy are you going to choose? Defense. For hand five. Defense. Exactly right. You need to get to hole 69. That's not 60. But you don't want to give your opponent very many. Because they're already at 61. So it's defense. I like this better.
What's happening on deal five? Where was the crib on the last deal? So where was the crib going to be on this deal? That'll give you a clue because the cards on the side that has the crib this time are one, two, three, eight, ten jack. Cards on the other side of the board are seven, seven, eight, six. Deal five. Seven, seven, eight, six on the one side of the board. One, two, three, eight, ten, Jack. So, notice the discard. Notice the discard to the crib. We put the 10 jack because they're touching rather than the 8 10, which have a gap in them. Even though we gave up two points in our hand to put the 10 jack in the crib. So at the end of that game, the score is, that hand is 69 to 73. Is that where your pegs are? 69 to 73. Notice again how little pegging there was. One peg on each side. Is that how it worked out? I think it should have worked out where you got one at the count of 28. And then their opponent should have had one for the last card. Now you should have got both of them. You got both of them? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, the ace, yeah, the ace for 28. Yeah, the other person didn't get any. So what should we be doing the next hand? The score now is 69 to 73. So we still need to be playing defense, right? Yeah. Opponent is already at 73. Now, my dealer is tall. Is, is there any advantage to continue this on through the, the full game? No. Oh. It's kind of tedious, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's follow the papers on through. At the end of deal six, the score is 76 to 84. Now that looks, you see here what the problem is here, folks look at that and they think 76, I'm losing. Where does their opponent need to be the next time? They've got 84, they need to be 95. The average hand will not put them at 95. So actually at 76, you have a slight advantage. You've been playing defense the last two hands. You might now consider playing optimal. Because you, where do you need to be the deal? 
is at least 69. 69. There, oh, there it is. And there's 85, and my opponent only has 84. So I really, I really have gained an advantage. In fact, it's a lot, it's more than you might think. And Delin shows it is plus seven. That your score at 76, you are plus seven. Because seven, 76, denied, and your opponent is minus one, should be at 85 and only has 84. So, so you, you gain the advantage in the game. And then you see what happens on deal seven. We end up with a score of 88 to 93. You need to be at least 85. You got 88. Your opponent needs to be 95. They got 93. So you're playing to slow them down. They're close to position, but they're not there. And you got a good chance to get there because all you need is seven. All you need is seven to get to 95. And that's how it looks at the end of deal seven, 88 to 93. Go ahead, go ahead and follow the game right on through. Uh, are you looking at deal eight now? Yeah. Okay. Notice the hand. And the score at the end of deal eight is 104 to 108. 13 to win. What are the chances of them having 13? The Lynn says it's 26%. It's the four. About one in four. They got about one in four chance to score 13. So don't despair. When your opponent needs more than nine or ten, the odds are that they won't get them. Now it's true, if you're dealing two fives and two jacks, they've got a really good start on 13. But if they get the typical hand, they'll, they'll be short of going out. And then notice what happens on deal nine. Great, uh, great way to end the game. Yeah, you're had nine, needed eleven. The ace, the ace cut, and a seven, eight discard. Uh, you know, you're in, you're in good shape. Anyway, if you, uh, if you have some time, follow some of these through, or create your own games at, at home and. You'll be amazed at how how significant these holes on the board are. Now, I would tell you to memorize these, and then next week I'll tell you why bother. <laughs> but but it is it is a very this is all you knew about position. These holes. It would improve your winning percentage a lot. And if you understood when you only have seven at the end of the first deal and you had the deal, you've got a 50% chance to win. It's not the end of the world. Not the time to get reckless. Now, if you got three or four, that's a different story. But you got a 50% chance to win if you only score seven, and that counts the pegs, the crib, and the hand. 
seven. That's all you need if you're dealing the first hand of the game. Next week, we're going to move into something called critical position zone. And I think you'll see that it, it uses this as a skeleton, a platform, on which to create four zones. And it will be quite easy for you, rather than remembering these as they apply to these deals, you'll be able to forget a lot of that. But I think in the meantime, it's important to understand how this works because it is the framework for the critical position zones we'll be talking about next week. Uh, there's a few other things, uh, no time tonight to cover them, but I'm going to try to squeeze them in at the start of next week. Uh, there was a section on percentage plays that I didn't really get into. And we've hit around the edges of them, so some of it you've picked up. But we want to spend a little time on that to start with, and then we'll move right into the position zone. Uh, and I sure like to encourage you to to check the website, and particularly the cribbage links on www.cribbage.org. There's a whole list of cribbage link links, other internet sites that have something to do with cribbage. And Cribbage Hand of the Day is a wonderful site. It usually has about 200 participants. And there are people who are willing to share their ideas about pegging, choosing strategy, and what you should discard. And there's a different puzzle every day. Daily Cribbage Hand. If you don't know how to look it up, type Daily Cribbage Hand in your search window, and it'll take you right there. And you can participate. You can vote. You can make your choice and not say a word for years on end, or you can dig right in there and start shooting off your thoughts about it right from day one. And, but it's a great way to start the day. Daily cribbage hand. And I think you'll find there that most of the hands that end up there are hands that people have trouble with, discarding and playing. And so you'll gain a lot of insight as to how to retain the hand and how to play it in the pegging game, and whether you should play offense, defense, safe or aggressive, bold or aggressive. Bold is another, that may be beyond offense. Bold, sometimes is a time to play bold. Super offense, yeah. And yeah. sometimes is to play safe, just almost be low defense. Safe, I got to play it safe. <coughs> Questions? Thank you all for being here. Hang around and play a few games of cribbage.